High hopes of continued peace and stability in Liberia as voters choose a new leader. But how will this vote enhance democracy in a country that has seen its share of violence? And what will it mean for the region? This is Inside Story. Hello and welcome to the program. I'm Hashim Ahl Barra. It's the end of an era for Africa's first female president, Ellen Johnson Sirleaf. After serving two terms, the Nobel Peace Laureate is stepping down. There are two men who are running to replace her. Liberians went to the polls on Tuesday in a run of vote that was delayed over allegations of fraud in October's first round. And if the result of this election holds, it will mark the first time in 73 years there's been a democratic transition of power. We'll get to our guests in a moment, but first, Mohamed Addo has this update from Monrovia. Hours after polling stations open, people are still lining up, waiting to cast their vote. There is momentum around this runoff election. Liberians say this is an election that is crucial to their country's future, and they are eager to vote, but not in as big numbers as they did in October during the first round. Then there were 20 candidates in the contest. Now, only two and their running mates. So there's only one ballot box where voters are putting their cast votes. Of course, uh, the issue of um, peace is high on the minds of Liberians. They've enjoyed between 12 and 15 years of uninterrupted peace, the longest in a long time. And they say they want whoever takes over from President Ellen Johnson Salif to be able to manage that peace properly. They also want the economy, which has also suffered greatly due to the uncertainty surrounding uh, the runoff election and the entire political process to be improved. They also want corruption, a big issue within the government of Ellen Johnson Salif dealt with. President Ellen Johnson Zalib herself has confessed that it is corruption and the issue of reconciling the people of Liberia that has been her greatest failures. Let's take a closer look at Liberia's history. It's a country founded by freed slaves from the US and Caribbean. It declared its independence in 1847. More than a century later, in 1980, President William Tolbert, who ruled Liberia for more than 27 years, was deposed in a military coup. In 1989, civil war broke out and lasted for 14 years. More than 250,000 people were killed, thousands more mutilated or raped, often by fighters who recruited child soldiers. Three years after the end of the civil war, Alan Johnson Sirleaf, was sworn into office, becoming Africa's first female president. She served two terms. Let's bring in our guests. Joining us from the Liberian capital, Monrovia, Henry Boyd Flomo, Director of Communications at the National Elections Commission. And joining us on Skype from Dakar, Adama Guy, a West African analyst and former Director of Information at the regional bloc ECOWAS. And in London, Alex Vines, head of the Africa program at Chatham House. Welcome to you all. Let me start by asking Mr. Flomo this. Mr. Flomo, how significant is this election for the Liberian people? Well, this election is quite significant uh, because uh, it's, it's, it's going to usher in uh, a leader who will take over from uh, Madame Ellen Johnson Salif. And uh, it's going to be history because uh, for many, many years, uh, we haven't had uh, a leader, a sitting president, turning over willingly and democratically to another person. So, yes, it is historic. And it will also be serving as a third consecutive presidential election since the uh, Civil War. Uh, so uh, the election is quite important and uh, we take it very seriously. Mr. Guy in Dakar, is it the fact that this is the first time that the Liberians will witness a smooth transition into democracy that makes this uh, vote very special for them? 
I think it's a very important election, not just for uh, Liberians, but for the whole of West Africa. Because if you recall when the crisis erupted in Liberia in 1989, the whole world was focused on the first Gulf War where Saddam Hussein had invaded, uh, I think in August 2000, uh, Kuwait. And uh, that generated the war waged by the former Bush administration, the first Bush administration. In West Africa, African nations under ECOWAS uh, decided to intervene in Liberia, and it took many years, not only before fixing the problem militarily, but also uh, ensuring that with the help of America, Charles Taylor, the then president, was ousted properly in 2003, I think, and proper election was organized that helped Ellen Johnson Sirleaf to take over as president, and mm -hmm. he, she has been in power for 10 years now. This smooth uh, succession is good for Liberia, is good for West Africa, is good for Africa overall. Mm -hmm. Mr. Vines, we have two contenders for the election. Uh, we have uh, George Weah and uh, Boakai. Uh, what is it that which makes George Weah suddenly the favorite in this election? Is it his uh, celebrity status or is it because he's been positioning himself as the man who potentially can unify Liberians behind him? Well, there, it's a mixture, to be honest. I mean, George Ware is a celebrity. I mean, he was the FIFA Football uh, uh, Player of the Year, in, uh, and that has really got international attention on him. He comes from very humble background in Liberia itself. He's uh, poorly educated, so uh, a lot of Liberians from humble backgrounds are supporting him. I mean, put it another way, 65% of Liberia's population are youth. Uh, and they see him as anti-establishment uh, and carrying the, the, the youth vote. I mean, he's mm -hmm. relatively young in his early 50s. So, um, yeah, there's a lot of excitement, a lot of interest. Whereas uh, the uh, other candidate is the vice president currently, and he's seen to represent the establishment. Uh, his nickname at, is Sleepy Joe because uh, at times he's been seen falling asleep in various meetings uh, that have been filmed on television. Uh, and the establishment in Liberia know him, probably would support him. Uh, but George Ware is the one that will disrupt the politics. Mm -hmm. And Ware, in my view, has improved over the years. He's run several times. In fact, he beat Ellen Johnson Sirleaf in a first round in, uh, in a previous election, but then lost in the second round. Mm -hmm. Mr. Flomo. Uh, and I think Weyer will be in a very strong position. I, I see your point. Mr. Uh, Mr. Flomo, Joseph Boakai is seen as the, is the establishment candidate, but however, he's been overshadowed by, the, uh, by uh, Sir Leif, who was larger than life during her two terms in office. But this is someone who says that he has the potential to fix the problems that Liberia faces, particularly rebuilding the infrastructure and also solving education and, and tackling poverty. What, what is the general sentiment in Liberia about, about Boakai? Well, um, you, could, you could see it uh, two ways. Uh, you could see it from the point of uh, the fact that he represents uh, the ruling party that has been in power two of years uh, since 2006. Uh, you could see it also from the uh, point that uh, 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 you hear the, the issue of change uh, that uh, one group has had their time. Uh, you could also hear the issue of age. Uh, so that, that a lot of things you hear uh, as people go about campaigning. Mm -hmm. But again, uh, for us at the Elections Commission, uh, our job is to create a, the, 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 the environment for people uh, to decide as to whether uh, they want to change what is relating to uh, age, or it's relating to uh, regime change or whatever. Uh, it, I mean, we we normally uh, don't look at you know the uh, the issues. Uh, we look at uh, uh, people. Uh, we educate them how to vote. Uh, we tell them how to mark the ballot papers, for instance. I see your point. Uh, and then uh, we got a process like we are doing today. Uh, yeah. Now, whoever wins, uh, I mean, whoever wins the election, and this is my question for. Mr. Guy in Dakar, whoever wins the election will have to tackle major challenges. 60% of the population is under 30. Most of the people in Liberia believe that the uh, government of uh, Surly failed to 
tackle issues, particularly corruption, inefficiency, and the poor services in the country. How do you think someone can tackle those issues when we know that this is one of the poorest nations in Africa? It is not going to be easy. And that is precisely the reason why actually Mr. Borkai, Joseph Borkai, is having problems because uh, the country uh, under uh, Sir Liv Johnson, who is a Harvard graduate person, a uh, very bright person, has not been uh, making progress in terms of job, unemployment, uh, and uh, actually uh, attracting really the investment that the country needs for in infrastructure and other things. Uh, on the other hand, the country has suffered from really the decrease in the commodity prices, and also it has faced Ebola, which has really uh, dented the image of the country. All these things have made the situation now very difficult for whoever comes to power to address the challenges of Liberia. Uh, indeed, Mr. Weir, who probably is the likely winner of this election because I think he has a serious lead this time around, uh, will have real problem convincing the international community to invest in Liberia, but also really convincing other people that he can do what Mrs. Sirleaf Johnson, once again, Harvard graduate, top, bank, top banker, okay. former UN top official at the UNDP, all these things, I think, will make it whoever is the winner to face difficulties. In addition, I've met uh, Mr. Boakai in, uh, in The Hague, and I think that he's somehow a bit old leader, 73 year old, and a bit uh, a, a lame duck uh, person already even getting into power. So okay. I think it won't be easy for whoever point. among the two will get into office. Mr. Vines, we know that both candidates have been saying throughout the campaign that they have the keys to unlock the, uh, the problems uh, and the potential for growth in the country. But we know that this is a country that has constrained finances. The revenues have been declining over the last few years, um, uh, particularly after the uh, Ebola uh, outbreak. How can the new president uh, move forward when we know that the budget of the state won't be able to uh, compensate for the problems that the country faces? Well, uh, Adama Gay has already said that the... Uh, Liberian economy has been hit by the legacy of Ebola, but particularly the slowdown of commodity prices. They've bounced back a little bit. So whoever's going to be the president has got a massive mountain to climb. Uh, there isn't enough money in Liberia. The steady incomes are small. The, the shipping registry, uh, as some of your listeners and viewers will know, Liberia has the second largest shipping registry in the world. They've got, they've got rubber, they've got iron ore. Um, so it's going to have to be about diversifying the economy, about how to grow agricultural production uh, and about improving education and, and, and skilling up, which is a massive problem for Liberia, which has a population of 47 percent of the population are, uh, are, 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 are literate, which means the majority of the population are preliterate. Mm -hmm. uh, and we've seen this in terms of the scandals about exam results at the University of Liberia, for example. So uh, Liberia has a very difficult time ahead and any new president will have to manage expectations. But what there is, is goodwill for Liberia. It is a country, as you, we've heard, that has come out of civil war. There's been 12 years of stability under the Ellen Johnson Sirleaf administration. This election today is so significant. It's the first democratic election with a transition between presidents since 1944. That's for 70 years, mm -hmm. uh, as the electoral commissioner has, has said. So um, a smooth, successful election will encourage business investors to and look at sense Liberia. I have no doubt about that. Positive signal to the international community. Mr. Uh, Flomo, let me ask you this, uh, not as a member of the election uh, uh, of the Communications Department of the Elections Commission, but as a Liberian. Uh, both candidates have been talking a lot about security. We know that the United Nations mission mandate comes to an end in January 2018. How is the, how crucial is the issue of security for the Liberians today when people, uh, when, when people go to the vote and decide who is going to be their president? How significant is that a factor for them? Well, I got to you talking about security. Yes, indeed, uh, uh, it's important. Uh, the, um, we are currently working with the Joint Security, uh, talking about Liberian National Police, 
uh, the immigration and other uh, security forces. Uh, everyone is, is, is concerned, uh, but again, uh, we've had a lot. Uh, we've had a lot of legal uh, battles uh, heading to today, uh, and I'm sure that uh, uh, having gone through all of the legal uh, uh, battles, uh, everyone will accept the result. That's what we, we continue to, to hope for, and that's what we, we can always hope for. So that, uh, I mean, you've, you've done your part as, as political parties, as, as, as candidates. Uh, you, you, they've campaigned very well. Uh, both parties uh, mm -hmm. went almost across the country. Uh, so we can, we can only hope that uh, today, as we speak, uh, it is a time for the voters, and they are doing their job. And they are the ones who uh, what we can hope for as decide. the commission is that yeah the candidates will, will respect the, 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 the views you know of the voters because uh, at the end of the day uh, our constitution said they will decide who leaves the country for the next six years so for us we are only guiding the process and we we always say that that we are not the one voting we are not the one making the decisions we only provide a platform and will be the one to announce the results. Okay. There have been some political and democratic changes in parts of Africa in recent years. Last month, Zimbabwe's military took power and forced longtime leader Robert Mugabe to resign. In August, Kenya's Supreme Court made history when it canceled the results of the presidential election, forcing a new poll. The court later upheld Uhuru Kenyatta's victory in October's rerun. In Nigeria, former military ruler Muhammad Buhari defeated the sitting president through the ballot box two years ago. Buhari's victory marked the first time there was a democratic transition of power. And one of the first democratic experiences was in Ghana, which was a one-party state. But that changed in 1992 when a referendum led to full democracy and a multi-party system. Mr. Guy, how significant is this election for the African continent, taking into consideration the fact that we've seen some countries beset by divisions or uncertainty, Burkina Faso, Ghana, Gabon, Gabon Kenya, and Zimbabwe? Look, election is not all uh, for democracy. Democracy entails more than just democracy. You need respect of law. You need uh, uh, good management of the public coffers. You need competent leaders who are patriotic and willing to understand that Africa has an opportunity now uh, with the natural resources, with the demographic dividend, and with other assets, including the good image that many countries now have. But uh, what is happening with democracy now is a wild card. You have had uh, all those changes, surprises, setbacks that you mentioned. And this time around, you need to take into account in Liberia the possibility of a soccer player becoming uh, a president in a post-conflict country. So this is really something to be a test to watch clearly. Secondly, also never forget two other factors in the case of Liberia. The fact that uh, you have the big Charles election, because if Mr. Weir wins along with Joel Taylor, the former wife of Charles Taylor, mm -hmm. uh, the supporters of Mr. Taylor, who are numerous in Liberia, will still ask questions, what is happening to our man? After all, ECOWAS leaders, they promised Mr. Taylor that he will not be extradited, after all, and they di didn't respect that. And last question, uh, in the case of Liberia, you have the ethnic and native uh, foreign dividend, the okay. division that exists between the former African-Americans and the Liberian born within the country. Mr. Overall, I think I see democracy point. is good, but it has to help raise the real question that should be addressed within African okay. development and African nations. Okay. Mr. Vines, a smooth transition to democracy in Liberia, is it likely to further consolidate democratic gains in Africa and put an end to the chaos and disorder that we've seen in many countries? Look, I... Uh, Africa is diverging. There are different types of democracy emerging. Uh, what I'm hopeful for is that the part of Africa that Liberia sits in is called the Mana River Union. So think of Sierra Leone, think of Cote d'Ivoire, think of Guinea, uh, the neighbors of Liberia. Now, 
10 years ago, the country was in a very poor state. Uh, it had just finished a civil war. That's a civil war that I myself had, had worked in as a, mm. uh, as a UN sanctions inspector. The, the country has stabilized now. And so a successful transition here, particularly if also the opposition parties or the parties uh, in general accept the result that happens today, that they don't go for a perpetual challenge with the courts, mm. that will be important for Liberia. Then I think it's about what type of government emerges in Liberia with the next president. So uh, if it's George Ware, does he have good advisers? Mm -hmm. uh, how will his vice president behave? Uh, we've heard that, you know, she is the former wife of the strongman, Charles Taylor. Those are the sorts of things that people okay. will be watching. Mm -hmm. But I have to say, we do have to celebrate that Liberia is going through a democratic transition here mm -hmm. of a sort that we have not seen for 70 years. That's okay, very can, significant. Sure. We, can, we cannot, I mean, uh, talk about this without giving credit to uh, uh, Sir, President Sirleaf. Mr. Flomo, how will she be remembered by the Liberian? Is she going to be more remembered by being the person who ensured this smooth transition to democracy or building a robust economy for many years? Well, it's it, it going to depend uh, where, uh, where one stands or the school of thought one, one will come from. Uh, but yes, indeed, uh, uh, to in Africa, uh, given the history USF uh, has alluded to, uh, to see a president uh, willing to turn over, anxious to turn over power after 12 years. I think it's a legacy that uh, Liberians will, will remember uh, forever. Uh, years again, uh, being the first uh, elected president after the Civil War, uh, yes, uh, it, again, it depends where you stand. Uh, but at the end of the day, you want to say she did her best. Uh, so whoever is, is elected after today, mm -hmm. uh, that person can only build from where she starts. Okay. So, uh, in the way you take it, uh, she's going to be remembered, you know, for uh, playing her, her, her role. I see uh, Yes, you, uh, like I said, it, it doesn't matter. Yeah, so, uh, okay. I mean, Mr. it depends Mr. where, 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 you, where come you stand. From. Okay, uh, I see if, your if point about the, the divided uh, sentiment about her. Mr. Uh, Guy, uh, at least we're talking about someone who hands over power in a very smooth democratic fashion and I think something which is very important in a continent like Africa. Very briefly, please. Yeah, I think it's, uh, it's a fantastic and I think that uh, uh, Mrs. Ellen Johnson Sirleaf has played a very important role. By the way, she wrote the foreword of my last book, Tomorrow the New Africa, and I know her quite well for over 20 years. I've seen how resilient she has been in power. In very difficult con con conditions, she could have chosen to remain a, a president of a bank somewhere in the U.S. or to be the former head of the uh, UNDP for Africa in New York and, and other okay. places. We're running she had out. All those opportunities, but she decided to come back home and work hard. I think transition to democracy now is something is that her is greatest accepted. legacy. What we want is good Alex management Vines, of African countries. Alex Vines is someone also who met. Uh, 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 Sirleaf, when he served in, uh, in Liberia, uh, what do you make of her contribution to the country and her, her legacy? Okay. There are three legacies. First is that she's the first woman president in Africa. That's a legacy. Second is she's a Nobel Prize winner. She shared the Nobel Peace Prize. And thirdly, in her 12 years, Liberia was at peace. That's her greatest legacy. She leaves a country at peace as she's stepping down as president. Thank you very much indeed, Mr. Flomo, Mr. Guy and Mr. Vines. Thank you very much indeed for your contribution. And thank you too for watching. You can see the program again anytime by visiting our website, aljazeera.com. For further discussion, go to our Facebook page. That's facebook.com forward slash AJ Inside Story. You can also join the conversation on Twitter. Our handle is at AJ Inside Story. From me, Hashim Ahlbar and the whole team here. Bye for now.